in the last class we have discussed about the query evaluation techniques where we have discussed about different techniques to uh, to evaluate the query like evaluate different relational operations uh, while uh, for efficient execution of those queries okay so uh, today we are going to discuss about the query optimization because see in the large databases where you have lots of data uh, the query uh, when that application is directed by the users they submit different requests and those are actually processed in the back end as queries now there can be different variations of those queries and the the database uh, system in the back end it try try to basically optimize the execution of those queries okay so there is an entire process for the query optimization and it is done by a particular component of the database which is called as the query optimizer okay now the overall structure of a dbms architecture can be seen from this diagram as you can see here this is the architecture of dbms that you find in the basic very basic you know in a initial chapter of the dbms textbook okay uh, see every applications you know query comes from different web forms that is from the web applications okay in terms of the user interactions right similarly some application front end the standalone applications okay sql interfaces so from these different interfaces the query commands are submitted to the database now database basically what it do it parse the query okay parse the query and then it submits it to the query optimization optimizer query optimizers will find out different plans to execute the query now here what we have discussed uh, in generating the plans uh, what we have discussed in the last class comes into play that is it takes out different it finds out different access paths you know the kind of indexes they are in the database those are considered okay and find out which plan which will fit better in this case so depending on the relational operations used in the query the index availability it does the it finds finalizes the optimum plan for execution of a particular query okay and that is done by the query optimizer and to identify the plan obviously it uh, uh, consults or it takes the information from the catalog okay because catalog contains every kind of information so for that again when it optimizes the plan and it finds out the or fixes the plan for execution of the query it takes those data from the its storage that is the system catalog to identify the plan index files what indexes are available for each of the relations used in the query okay and the data file to access the data so all these things are taken from the database by the dbms architecture or dbms software now let us see in detail the optimizer see optimizer comes here in the architecture diagram you can see here the optimizer comes just below the parser you can see optimizer comes just below the parser here okay now let us break this optimizer and see the detail of what is there in the in the optimizer so in the query optimizer you have two part which is the plan generator and plan cost estimator the plan generator and the plan cost estimator now query parser takes the query sql query okay it comes the sql query uh, which the application front end has you know from the front end it comes it comes in terms of some query format right sql format that is the select from where closet etc so after that query of the parser what it do it will generate the relational algebra expressions now we'll see into what kind of relation how the relational expressions are being created and then obviously from those expressions it creates the query tree okay and that it submits to the query optimizer query optimizer finds out different plans for execution of the query depending on the informations available to it from the database that is the type of indexes available for that particular um, relational relations which are used in the query right and the uh, uh, 
the different you know uh, the relational operators type of relational operators that are being used and the different catalog informations that are available so after that it identifies the cost estimation that means how many io operations will be required for each of the plan and depending on whichever plan gives the best cost estimation that is the minimum cost estimation or you can say the minimum amount of io minimum number of ios that uh, or you can say the minimum number of page retrieval because io one io means one page retrieval from the backend so depending on that it estimates the cost and finalizes which plan is best suited and accordingly it goes for the execution now each of the query is understood or by recognizing that the query is actually a combination of three parts what are those three parts the selection then comes the projection and then comes the join okay so it is part of the there are three components in every query that is the selection now where the selection is done it is in the where clause they are where you use the relational operators right from there you get the uh, we have discussed yesterday about the you know different filtering criteria that is the way it uses the indexes and the uh, find out the most selective path in that using those uh, sel selective most selective access path in that particular selection part that is the using the selection operators and then it goes on to identify the join condition depending on the number of relations used in the query okay if there are two relations are used and there is a join condition the joining is done okay and then it goes for the projection projection is in the select clause of the query okay so after that it as I, as you see the plan generator after that it actually enumerates the plan generator actually enumerates different alternative plans which are for evaluation of the evaluating the expression okay so uh, since for a particular big uh, query there may be a enormous number of plans you know alternative plans may be generated so most of the query optimizer what they do they select a subset of those plans okay and then evaluate it so it initially discards many of the plans as non efficient only it takes few subsets and from there it identifies the most efficient plan okay so uh, after estimating that plan is being selected it estimates the cost okay so and then it identifies the lowest estimated cost so once you the plan that query optimizer generates the cost of each of the plans it identifies the lowest cost to execute lowest cost uh, plan to execute okay so query evaluation plans so going for the query evaluation plans let's take one example here okay so uh, consider a relational algebra tree with you know so relational expressions basically relational algebra expression and the and a tree for a particular query now what is the query query is this one that is the select as name this is select like from here select as name as dot as name actually it is the name of the relation is sub is indicated by s here because we are using alias alias r and alias s to for the relations so from from reserves reserves is alias r sailors sailors f okay where where r sid because we are taking alias here so r dot sid 
it means the reserve dot SID is equal to SSID, sailor dot SID, okay, and and RBID R, that reserve dot both ID BID is equal to 100 and and S rating S dot rating is greater than 5. So, rating of the sailor is greater than 5. So, this is the query which is submitted for a question. Now, how is that relational algebra expression being generated and then alternative plans evaluated? So, first relational algebra expression will be created by the query optimizers. Oh, that is that will be submitted to the query optimizers by the parser. Parser will create the algebra expression and the tree, the relational uh, that um, uh, the qu query tree. And from the query tree, it will parse what optimizer will do. It will enumerate different plans for evaluation of this uh, of this query, and it will generate the cost and it will identify the minimum optimum cost which is there and that will be executed okay that way it will be executed so going by the the relational algebra expression here you see what you find that it first take the first take the this one the uh, see basically what it will do it will take the cross product okay so that is the it will find the uh, uh, the joining condition on the SID so this SID RSID equal to SID in the where clause that will be generated so the expression here will be that you know uh, reserves reserves join SID 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 sailor S okay so this is what you get this one this part okay this part and then you have on that you have the selection you know out of up to that is uh, this join condition will be if there is some you know as we discussed yesterday about the you know uh, the index join condition where if you have any of the indexes available suppose one of the relation has index on SID then use this index to get the SID field and then join with the next part that is so and then comes the next part that is the uh, this part the selection part okay so selection is the selection on the BID is 100 okay right and rating greater than 5 and rating greater than 5 right so <coughs> this gives you the entire this part and above that there is the projection so projection is on this projection is on the s name so you get the projection on s name on this one so this becomes the relational algebra expression now once it is parsed and found the relational algebra expression from the query it goes for creation of the query tree now here comes the query tree okay so here we get the query tree now what is the query tree here you see you have at the bottom you have the two database tables reserves and sellers okay so you get the reserves and sailors okay the both these tables are basically combined okay so you get the 
S I D on S I D that is the joining condition equijoin and the output of the equijoin goes to the <coughs> next relational part that is the relational operator used as the B I D is equal to 100 and the rating greater than 5 and rating greater than 5. So output of this goes for the projection. Okay. So projection is done on the F name. So that is how you get the output. Okay. So so finally output is produced by the projection there. So relational algebra expression basically partially specifies the how to evaluate the query. Okay. So <coughs> what we do from the relational algebra expression, we first perform the natural join between the sailor and the sailor and the reserve. So this becomes the natural join up between the sailor and the uh, reserve. And then uh, on the output of that, whatever is that you get you get whatever output that you get from the joining condition. On that, you perform the selection operation based on the BID equal to 100 and rating greater than 5. So obviously, this also have the reducing factor. So it filters out the C. First, you <coughs> filters the entire database by taking the condition on SID equal to SID, right? That is the equation condition. After that, on that particular filtered output, you perform the selection condition. What is the selection condition? is the BID equal to 100, okay? So you get some more filtering, right? That is above, over, over and above that SID equal to SID, you have that BID greater than 100. So based on that condition, some more uh, tuples are eliminated, right? So some tuples are selected where BID is 100. So after that, the another end condition is that rating greater than 5. So cellular rating greater than 5 tuples are only selected. So it is filtered out further, right? And then on that output, you you produce the or you get you apply the projection. Okay, so projection is on what projection? As you know, it basically it <coughs> it filters out some specific attributes from that particular relation. So here the specific attribute is S name. So S name field that Taylor name field is is filtered out. So that becomes the projection. Now, to obtain the fully specified evaluation plan, uh, we must decide on an implementation of each of the uh, algebra operation involved. So, the different plans are being identified and we must identify which plans to execute. Okay? So, so in that process only, we, we can find out the fully specified evaluation plan. Now let's see how to do it. Okay. So multi-operator query, queries are basically done through pipeline evaluation. So when we have a query of this sort, this is called the, we can say, we can say multi-operator queries because we are using multiple operators. See, you have the, we have the equation, we have that relational operator equal to, this equal to 100, and here it is greater than 5. So this is a multi-operator. So multi-operator queries can be actually found out, uh, actually evaluated using a particular, criteria, particular methodology, which is called the pipeline evaluation. So what is actually non-pipeline evaluation, when you see, talk about pipeline evaluation is that, in a non-pipeline means, where for every suppose you are suppose you are calculating SID equal to SID, okay? So the output of the SID equal to SID, that equation condition, is stored in a temporary field, temporary table. Temporary table is created for storing that output. And on that output, the BID equal to 100 will be applied. Okay? So some more filtering will be done for BID equal to 100. So those filtered output will again generate a temporary table. 
on that again the rating is greater than 5 will be applied okay so that will be that will again filter out some more right and it will generate again a temporary table okay so on that temporary table again the projection will be carried out so finally the table generated by the projection will be the output so that is the normal uh, non pipeline output now what the pipeline does pipeline does not create those temporary tables in between okay what it do it basically takes the output of each operator on the fly from one operator to the other okay and generates the outputs so the uh, you can say overhead of generating those tables and storing those temporary tables gets reduced so temp this pipeline method is basically more suitable most of the modern database systems they use the pipelining approach okay so in the pipelining approach we do it in a on the fly methodology that is initially the file scanning maybe maybe here we use the file scanning for this particular part for getting the actual tuples of the reserves in the sailor so file scan can be used for this one for initially getting all the inputs okay after that it will be uh, say you use the simple nested loop here for execution of this uh, equi join okay so you use the simple nested loops for execution of this particular equi join now you see you are using this operator now comes the user using of the operators so you are basically what pipelining does it will just avoid those temporary table creation that overhead okay it makes the query faster so what you will do every tuple this particular operation generates it will be served as the input to this particular this particular operations here on the fly so that's why we write on the fly okay and then whatever output this expression generates here for this operation that will again goes as the input to the over the other operations here again on the fly okay on the fly so it goes to the the upper operation again on the fly so this is what how the pipelining works so so as i have described already this is what has been uh, what i we i am again explaining that is by applying the primary selection on the results we may use the temporary tables so that becomes an inefficient approach because every for every operation for the output you have to generate the temporary table again that has to be taken as the input by the above operator so the overhead is more so we can use the on the fly approach for evaluation by using the pipeline now what the optimizer does typical optimizer does it will basically generate the different as i told you different alternative plans of execution of the uh, the query okay and it will try to find out the op most optimum or which gives gives the lowest estimated cost as the preferred plan for executing the query okay so alternative plans considered can be in enumerable that is that is numerous that is there may be lot of alternative plans okay from that it selects only few the subset and from there it selects some uh, one or two, one particular execution plan so for selection see every query has it has a select clause from and where clause from from the selection conditions which are specified in the where clause and for where you have a joining condition or a natural join suppose then we can use a cross product of the elements and then apply the equality condition there on that cross product to get the join okay and so this join conditions actually is basically uh, selection and the cross product okay because cross product makes every combination with every other combination selection is the equality selection that is the 
SID equal to SID is one selection condition. So it makes it the equality and it filters out those equal people to the, where the SID values are equal from those cross product values. So that is where the uh, can uh, the selection and the cross product can be joined to uh, can be actually combined to get the join condition. Now again when we generate such join conditions so then a join condition if we have multiple join conditions there in a query in a complex query there we can extensively reorder those joins you know we can have reordering of joins in different ways okay and then we can apply the selection and the projections on those you know uh, to reduce the size of the input okay so one of the plan most preferred plan is actually called the less deep plan okay just consider how it is so let's look into how it is uh, Say we have multiple joints. Now there are four relations here A, a initial join with B, a initial join with C, a initial join with D. Okay, so we can have three different types of uh, the query trees here. That is, say we have a query tree you know where the joints are ordered in a fashion which goes into the uh, the left deep way that is the d first the base here is a b c d you can see the left part here this one then you have Another join, suppose, where you have kind of join, where you are using this is another structure for joining. And then you have another join where you have this kind of structure, okay? So, in this case, we call actually uh, these two figures as the linear tree. These two figures is the linear tree. Okay? Why we this we call these two as the linear tree? Because in every uh, in this two table, you see you have a base table at least one base table connected to the join condition okay and this particular tree is called as the non-linear tree why this non-linear tree because there is a join condition you see we do not have the base table any of the base table connected so in the in this particular tree we find in this particular join condition both the base table only in this case one is the output of this join condition so it's, there is no base table another is the base table see here again you have the output of this join condition and this another is the base table. So at least one base table you have as the input to the join condition. Here also you find at least one base table. So both are linear trees. This is non-linear tree because these two join condition has base table connected but these two, this join condition does not have a base table connected here. Okay. So here is the first joining this first tree here this is called as the less deep tree where at least one base table exists as the 
as the right mo right uh, uh, that is the right uh, tile of the join condition. Okay, so that becomes a left div tree. So in a left div tree, the right child of each joint is a vegetable. That is the definition of a left div tree. Okay. So, optimizer, the, op, the optimizer typically use the dynamic programming approach to efficiently search the class of the left div plan, okay. So, optimizer basically all, when it generates the plan, it always looks for the plan which is generated from the left div tree, okay. So, it never considers the second and third. So, for pruning the tree space, that is different plants which are generated and the tree that you get, you know, for those plants, that is the, uh, from the, uh, the algebra, linear algebra expression that the different trees that you generate, it to prune the space, to form, uh, to, it always goes for the left deep plant, okay. So, as the number of join increases, okay, uh, the number of alternative plan actually gets increased significantly, okay, rapidly. So, it is, just, it is necessary to prune the space. It becomes necessary to prune the space for alternative plans, okay. That is why the optimizer goes for the left deep trees to generate the fully pipeline plan because the left deep trees allows us to go for fully pipeline plan. As I was telling you in the last, uh, the, the, uh, in that particular previous slide, that is the left deep plan is, one of, that is the pipelining it has a definitive advantage because it selects the tuples on the fly. It does not go for creation of the, uh, the interpreted table, okay. So since left deep plan is most suitable one for the pipeline approach, so, when the query optimizer generates different plan, whichever plan gives the left deep uh, tree is, is generated from the left deep tree is selected for execution, okay. So, it is, uh, where all joints are evaluated using the pipelining, okay. So, Estimating the cost, uh, this cost of a plan, okay, to, to estimate the cost of a plan, uh, so what is the cost of a plan here? When the, when, because see, the query optimizer always goes for the, the plan which, gives, which is of the lowest cost, okay. So plan of a cost is actually the plan of cost of each of the operator used in that particular operator it contains, okay. So, cost of individual list operator is the, uh, you, uh, that is for, by using the different informations that are available, like, you know, from the catalog, like, uh, for every operator, the cost are, every operator that are used in a query, the cost uh, are considered for generating the overall cost of the query, okay. So, for every operator, the cost is estimated by looking at the uh, the different information available in the catalog. That is the kind of indexes because index plays a very vital role. So if some the fields of that particular or the um, used in that particular operator, okay, if those attributes are are the the search items in the index tree, that is the uh, the index file, then obviously the keys of the index file, then obviously those particular um, the search field can be used, okay, to get the item to get the upper, uh, tuples. So that makes it most, more efficient, okay. So, so the, in fact, uh, also it looks for different properties like size, sort order, etc. okay, in the input tables. So for every relation that is used in the operator, in the relational operators, the different informations are collected and accordingly the plan of execu that execu those operations are executed. So cost of a plan 
can be broken down into three parts. Okay, these are the three parts. One is the reading the input tables. Okay, so uh, possibly you know uh, multiple times in the in the case of some join and sorting algorithms, the table may have to be read. Okay, so first is that getting the but through file scan, getting the input tables. Okay. So after that, writing the intermediate tables. So if you are not choosing the pipelining approach, then intermediate tables has to be created. If in the fully pipeline approach, this is not required, writing of the intermediate table. And then comes the sorting the final result. So okay. So if the query specifies the duplicate elimination, then we need to sort those. On those data, the final result. Okay, so in the output order. So, so it involves those uh, operations which are required while reading the input tables. Okay, that is from where the cost is being estimated. Then, if writing intermediate table is required, then obviously it incurs an additional cost. In pipelining, obviously it is not required. And if you, if the query requires that there is a sorted order outputs require, uh, is necessary, then sorting of the final results has to be done. So all this involves the final cost of the plan. Okay. So this is how the optimum um, optimizer or query optimizer works. Okay. So and it is the process of query optimization. Thank you.